Sealmaster presents On the Pavement, featuring the Spraymaster Custom Truck Mount. Good morning, my name is Garrett Knoll with Sealmaster Equipment and today we're here to talk to you about our custom truck mounting options. Sealmaster proudly offers custom truck mounting designs and features that are built right here in our corporate headquarters in Sandusky, Ohio. This particular unit behind me is the 2,250 gallon capacity spray master capable of moving asphalt seal coat with heavy sand loading. Let's go ahead and take you through some of the features. Today we're going to be referencing our Gladiator pumping system, which is essentially a 3 inch dual air diaphragm pump that is powered by this 33.5 horsepower Kubota diesel engine and the largest air compressor in the industry, our 100 CFM compressor. Let's go ahead and take you through some of the features of this Kubota motor. And very quickly let's touch on some of the components here on our Kubota diesel engine. Directly mounted to the motor here is our hydraulic pump. We also have our water separating filter. We have our throttle cable, air filter housing, radiator. On the opposite side is our alternator. And let's go ahead and check out the control panel. So here on our control panel, we have a few different gauges. To the left is our hour meter, reading engine hours. We have our engine safety switch, which needs to be depressed um, upon startup. And we also have an indicator gauge over here with four indicator lights. We have water temperature, engine oil pressure, battery voltage, and your glow plug light for your diesel motor. Down here is your ignition, standard five prong ignition, and also your air compressor on off feature. And directly mounted to our diesel Kubota motor is our 100 CFM air compressor. Some of the components on the compressor feature a gauge, pressure gauge, which should be reading 120 PSI on the front face. And this is also your air filter housing, which is a wear or spare part that we'd recommend maybe that you have on the shelf. This is the air filter housing and canister. And located right here is our hydraulic motor for our full sweep agitation with rubber wipers inside our tank. And guys, I'm standing in our custom design drop deck, which can be used to store any additional tools or blowers that you might have. And right behind me is our heavy duty drive assembly for our full sweep agitator. As we mentioned, this unit is designed to mix product with heavy sand loading which is the reason for our heavy duty drive. And located just above our gearing is our 10 gallon hydraulic oil tank. And just as a note, all Sealmaster equipment does use AW68 spec hydraulic oil. In addition to the drop deck for storing any additional tools or blowers you may have, we have provided you with tie down loops and there's also these safety chains to prevent any units from tumbling onto the road. And mounted here on the side of the tank is our hydraulic control valve that operates the full sweep agitator inside the tank. The reason we chose this location for the control valve is it's easily accessible either from the ground or from our sand loading platform. And this is a variable speed hydraulic control valve with forward and reverse function. And here we have on top of the tank is our safety lockdown lid, which comes complete with the breather vent. And as you can see, I'm standing up on our sand loading platform. And again, that has easy access to our agitator forward and reverse control valve. Okay, here we are on our rear operator platform. And we wanna go through some of the features back here on the back of the machine. Here we have a four inch butterfly valve, which is our main material valve. Flows into a three gallon basket strainer, which is used to reduce your tip clogging.
We've also got a main suction valve for re refilling our tank. Up here mounted to the tank, I've got a water trap for my Gladiator 3 inch dual diaphragm pump. And here is my internal pressure regulator for my Gladiator 3 inch dual diaphragm pump, which is used to control and set the internal pressure. Here I have my main open and close valve for spray bar, material to my spray bar. This is my recirculation line back to tank and recirculation valve. Domed surge tank for pulsation dampening. And here is my Gladiator 3 inch dual diaphragm pump. And underneath here is open and close for my 75 foot hose and spray wand. On this unit we have an air actuated spray bar, meaning I'm using air pressure to open and close all of my valves at the same time. The way that works, on the back of the machine here, I have got a master on off switch, which supplies power to my 12 volt actuator. When I want to open or close the spray bar, all I'm going to do is open my air pressure, which runs through a regulator, through the actuator, and supplies air to the spray bar. So if I want to close the spray bar, all I do is throw my switch to the off position. If I want to open my spray bar, all I need to do is flick it to the on position, and that will automatically open and close all my valves. This function can also be operated up in the cab by the driver. One of the most unique features on our 3-inch Gladiator diaphragm pump is the stroke counter, which is actually supplying information back to the main control panel in the cab. That control panel is also outfitted with GPS that's tracking the miles per hour of this truck. So when we gather all that information up, what we have is easily calculable data that's providing the amount of mill thickness of product that we're laying down. Now, we, the driver will know if he's been going too fast, if we've been going too slow, and it's all because we know a fixed number or a fixed volume of product per stroke is coming through the pump. Another feature on this machine that is actually an optional feature is our electric hose reel. This is a 75 foot hose, three quarter inch diameter. And as an option, I just by the press of a button can wind this hose back up. This is an electric hose reel for our 75 foot hose and spray wand. So on the rear operator platform, we have our main control valve that is gonna operate all the hydraulic functions on our rear drag box assembly. This particular drag box or screed was specifically designed to apply our liquid road product. As you can see, the drag box itself has an eight foot wide finished squeegee that will extend to 12 feet hydraulically. And there is also a finished brush to knock down any high spots you may have. And the functions on my hydraulic control valve from left to right as I'm standing, this valve will raise and lower the drag box hydraulically, which is this hydraulic cylinder here. And my other two valves are what control my extender cylinders. And what's nice about that is I can actually extend one side for doing edges. So if I just need the left side, I can very simply open this valve and I'll hydraulically extend out to the right. This valve here I can open and hydraulically extend out to the left. And again, we can extend up to a maximum width of 12 feet, which is your normal lane width. On our liquid road drag box, we have also provided you with adjustable pads, which you can raise or lower to control the amount of material that passes underneath your finished squeegee. Unlike some of our other squeegee box assemblies, the liquid road drag box has material provided via the spray bar rather than a bulk discharge valve. As you can see on this spray bar, we have removed the actual spray tip and installed these material drops, which are supplying a nice even flow of material across the entire width of the drag box. Another unique feature about our Liquid Road drag box is our easily removable brushes. After every day's application, you're gonna to wanna to pull these brushes out and immerse them in water or completely clean them, or else we're gonna be changing these out daily. That's why we give you these easily removable brushes with these little set screw attachments just to easily take them out and drop them in your water box. 
So at the moment I have my Liquid Road drag box fully extended to the 12 foot width. And we wanted to walk you through how to fold down your spray bar and properly connect the air hose to actuate your valves because we want to make sure we're supplying that nice even flow of material all the way across that 12 foot width. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is fold down my arms, my spray bar arms. So I'm just going to pull my pin and lay my spray bar down with my material drops. At this point in time, I can take my valves, insert there. Now I've got air actuated valves all the way across my spray bar and I've got a nice even flow of material all the way across my squeegee. Action. Okay, so we've taken you around, showing you all the features of our Spraymaster custom truck mount. We're gonna go ahead and get into the operations, but first we're gonna do our safety check, our safety walk around. We're gonna check all the fluid levels, make sure this machine is safe to operate. Remember, you always wanna have the proper safety gear, gloves, eye protection, earring protection if you need it. We'll do our safety check, and then we'll get into the operations. Okay, we've done our safety check, our safety walk around. Everything looks good on the machine. I've got my gloves on. We're ready to fire this engine up and set our full sweep agitation in motion. Remember, I'm gonna be turning my key back to the left until my glow plug indicator light in the bottom right hand corner goes out. I'm gonna depress my engine safety switch. My glow plug lights have gone out. I'm safe to start this engine. Okay, so I've got my engine running. I'm gonna go ahead and set my full sweep agitator in motion. Here's my variable speed control valve here mounted on the side of my tank. I've got forward and reverse. And again, we're not gonna jam this thing in full speed. I just wanna find a nice, slow, consistent speed to give me a good mix, nice, consistent mix of product. And as we mentioned before, we do have heavy duty agitator drive with gear reduction for moving that heavy product with heavy sand. We're gonna go ahead and increase our engine speed or our throttle speed and engage our compressor in order to set the internal pump pressure on our three inch gladiator pump. Okay, here we are at the back of the machine. My engine's running. My compressor is engaged. We're okay to go ahead and set our internal pump pressure on our three inch gladiator. First things first, we're gonna open our main material valve. Okay, with my main material valve open, next I'm gonna open my recirculation valve. At this point in time, I'm safe to go ahead and crack the air pressure to my dual diaphragm pump. You're going to hear the pump cycle on. Now my system is charged. I can go ahead and close my recirculation valve and let that pump cycle into neutral. Okay, I'm going to close my recirculation valve and you're going to hear the pump cycle into neutral. At that point in time, I can take a look at my pressure regulator gauge and it's reading just under 85 PSI, which is my internal pressure. 85 is pretty close, but we wanna go ahead and dial that back to 80. We recommend 80 PSI internal pressure to start. Depending on viscosity of material, you may wanna increase that over time. We're just basically showing you how to adjust it, okay? So with this showing 85 and my pump in a neutral state, I'm gonna go ahead and dial this back to 80 PSI. Okay, so now I've dialed my internal pump pressure back to 80 PSI. I can go ahead and open my recirculation valve. We're just gonna recharge this system for a few cycles. Close my recirculation valve. My system's charged. I'm ready to spray material through my spray bar or drop material through my material drops or use my spray wand at this point. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and put some product down through our spray bar with the material drop hoses installed. We're not gonna be using the spray bar with the nozzle tips just yet. 
We want to demonstrate the Liquid Road drag box to you, first in an eight foot wide pattern and second fully extended 12 feet wide. We also wanted to mention that the spray bar not only has air actuated valves, but each individual nozzle has a manual on off or open and close valve that we will need to go around and open. The reason we have those valves is just in case you have a scenario or a situation where you need more or less product at a certain area, you can go around and shut off half your nozzles or turn on only one side at a time. Just gives you some more options for where product is needed or where it's not needed. So first step is to go around and open all of our manual control valves. So when we hit that air actuator, we're gonna be dumping product. Okay, we went around and opened all of our valves at our material drop points. We're gonna go ahead and drop our drag box all the way down to the ground. We'll go ahead and open air pressure to the pump and start moving some material. Please keep in mind, we are using water. This is a new machine and we're gonna put some water down so it may not look apples to apples, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so we went ahead and dropped our drag box. We've already charged our system and checked the internal pressure. We've closed our recirculation valve and cycled our pump into neutral. At this point in time, I'm safe to go ahead and open my main material valve back to the spray bar. And the very last thing I'm gonna do is use my toggle switch to air actuate all my valves at the same time. Remember, there are two toggle switches back here, so you can utilize either side to communicate with your driver. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open my main valve, which is gonna allow material back to my spray bar. Okay, I have the whole system's charged, and I'm gonna go ahead and signal my driver. Once he sets the truck in motion, I'm gonna to toggle my air actuated valves and release the material. Okay guys, we went ahead and demonstrated an eight foot wide pool for you. That's our standard width without the extenders open. Next thing we're gonna do is open it all the way up to 12 foot wide. We're also gonna have to lay down our left and right side material drops to provide a nice even flow of material. First thing I'm gonna do is hit my hydraulic levers to open up my squeegee box to 12 feet wide. Once those are fully extended, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my pins and lay down my material drops to a full 12 foot width. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and fold down my left hand side material drops. Remember, I wanna connect my air hose for my air actuated valves. Okay, we've went ahead and extended our drag box out to 12 feet. We've laid down our additional material drops. We're gonna go ahead and make a 12 foot wide pull. Remember, we're using water here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate our 75 foot hose and spray wand. Same order of operations that we've worked with you. We're gonna go ahead and start our diesel Kubota engine. We're gonna set our agitation in motion. We're gonna increase our engine RPMs and engage the compressor. And we'll go in the back of the machine, charge our system, extend our spray wand, and demonstrate the wand for you. Okay, 
with our engine running, we're safe to open our main material valve. We'll open our recirculation valve, open up our pump assembly and charge our system. Once my pump has cycled a few times, I can go ahead and shut my recirculation valve. The pump will cycle into neutral. At this point in time, our system's charged. I can go ahead and toggle all my switches and open up my spray bar. Before I do that, I need to go around and open all of my manual valves. So the air actuation, when we're ready, will go ahead and spray product. Here we are at the back of the machine. We're gonna go ahead and charge our system. Same order of operations, whether you're using the spray bar or the spray wand. Step one, open our main material valve. I'm gonna go ahead and open my recirculation valve, which is essentially gonna charge the system. You'll hear the pump kick in. Once the pump cycles a few times, I'm gonna close my recirculation valve. The pump will cycle into neutral. I've got 80 PSI on my gauge. Let's go demonstrate that spray wand. Okay, my system's charged. I'm gonna go ahead and charge my 75 foot of hose with my main valve here underneath my surge tank. Okay, now I'm safe to go ahead and extend my hose and start spraying. Okay guys, we're getting ready to spray some material through our wand. Remember the 80 PSI internal pump pressure should be just enough to raise this off my lead hand here. I should just be guiding this wand. I shouldn't have much weight in my hand. The pressure should be taking care of most of the load. Remember, when you start, you wanna make sure you're in motion. Okay, let's go ahead and demonstrate for you our eight foot wide spray bar with the optional 12 foot extenders, both left and right side. First thing I need to do is go around and open all of my manual valves. So when I turn on my actuator, my valves will open. That'll be the last step. First thing I'm gonna do is open all of my manual valves. Okay. At this point in time, I can go ahead and charge my system completely using the same order of operations. First thing is open my main material, my main material valve. Recirculation valve is open. I can turn on my pump. Close recirculation. Pump cycles into neutral. Now my system's charged. I'm safe to go ahead and toggle my switch. At this point in time, we're ready to spray. One quick thing we wanna to mention to you guys, we are going to use our eight foot spray bar, but essentially we're spraying a 10 foot wide path with the optional left and right extensions down. We are 12 foot wide, but essentially spraying a 14 foot wide path. Again, we're using water and we're using 8,100 tip size, demonstrating you that wider tip for our Liquid Road product. Okay guys, pumping system's charged. I'm gonna go ahead and send product down to my spray bar by opening my material valve here. Okay, now when I actuate my air valve, I'm gonna be spraying material. I'm gonna set my driver in motion, we're gonna spray. Okay, we went ahead and laid down our left and right extensions as we demonstrated to you previously. As I mentioned before, we are 12 foot wide on the spray bar, but we're essentially spraying a 14 foot wide pattern. My system's charged. My air lines are connected for my air actuated valves. All my manual valves are cracked. Let's go ahead and put down a 14 foot wide path.
Okay, so we've shown you everything that this particular unit can do. We can spray product through the spray bar, through the spray wand, or we can use our specially designed drag box for our liquid road. Just very quickly, we want to run through the proper shutdown procedure to decharge or depressurize this system. First thing you always want to do is shut off your main material valve. Then I'm going to shut off my valve to my spray bar. At this point in time, I can close air to my air actuator and my main material pump. Then I'm going to open my recirculation valve to relieve all my pressure. Once the pump has cycled a few times, go ahead and close this down and you're all set. Okay, that concludes our video on the Spraymaster Custom Truck Mount with 3 inch Gladiator Pump. As always, we like to close our video with some recommendations on wares and spares to have on the shelf for this particular unit. Again, we have a 33 and a half horsepower Kubota diesel engine. We'd recommend that you hold on to the air filter and the diesel fuel water separating filter. There's also an air filter on the compressor. We'd recommend that you have in stock. The hydraulic system has a suction filter element that would be a good thing to have on the shelf. Also your three gallon basket strainer element. We have 8,100 tips on our spray bar. A couple of those on the shelf would be a great idea, as well as your squeegee rubbers and your brushes. Okay, we hope we've, you found this video useful and valuable, and thanks for watching. Let's review the key features. Ideal for both transporting material to the job site and applying material to the pavement. Custom truck mounting includes custom fabricating a flatbed with fenders onto a truck chassis, and then custom mounting a Spraymaster tank to the flatbed. Truck mount units feature several spray systems to choose from, including the Gladiator 3-inch air-driven dual diaphragm pump spray system, which features the 100 CFM air compressor for maximum material volume and pressure. The Gladiator is capable of pumping and spraying pavement sealers with heavy sand loadings. The Gladiator spray system provides continuous spray bar application up to 12 feet wide. The Gladiator is ideal for road, airport, and other large project applications. The Max Air 2 inch air driven dual diaphragm pump features a 40 CFM air compressor for added material volume and pressure. The Max Air system is ideal for spraying sand-filled pavement sealers through both spray wand and 8-foot spray bar. The Pro Air 1.5 inch air-driven dual diaphragm pump is driven by a 24 CFM air compressor and is ideal for both spray wand and spray bar application. The Pro Air system has been the industry workhorse for decades. The Sand Pumper 2 2 inch hydraulically driven dual diaphragm pump is ideal for those that want an all hydraulic system. The Sand Pumper 2 provides plenty of volume and pressure for both spray wand and spray bar applications. Spraymaster truck mount units are available in sizes ranging from 575 gallon up to 2000 gallon capacities. Standard Spray Master tank features include Hydraulically controlled full sweep agitator with forward and reverse provides complete material mixing Rubber wiper blades on agitator paddles keep sides of tank clean and prevent material buildup 75 foot hose and spray wand 1 gallon easy clean basket strainer to reduce tip clogging Available options. The following options are available on the Spraymaster truck mount units. 8 foot manually operated spray bar provides a 10 foot spray width. 8 foot cab operated air actuated spray bar provides a 10 foot spray width recommended for Max Air and Pro Air systems. 12 foot fold down air actuated spray bar provides a 14 foot spray width 
recommended for the Gladiator spray system only. 8-foot hydraulic spray bar kit provides a 10-foot spray width recommended for the Sand Pumper 2 system only. Liquid Road expandable squeegee and brush assembly designed for applying Liquid Road as well as other heavily fortified pavement surface treatments. 8 and 10 foot squeegee drag box assemblies. Rear operator platform which is strongly recommended for use with spray bars. Electric hose reel returns spray hose automatically. Hand operated hose reel. Metal toolboxes for added storage. Restyle tube hitch includes pinnel eye and 2 inch ball. For more information on this machine and all other Sealmaster equipment, contact your Sealmaster representative at 800-395-7325 or visit sealmaster.net.